Because if you're not studying smartly and not using your time efficiently, you won't see the, the, that increase from a pretty good score to an amazing score. Noor, welcome to the MCAT podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. I'm excited to chat with you about a topic that scares a lot of students. The MCAT obviously is a huge beast. There are lots of different topics, four different sections, and and lots of things to know. Yeah. And sure. I don't know if this is on the MCAT or not, but human psychology says, <laughs> hey, we tend to avoid the things that we are not good at. And oh, we yeah. focus on the things that we are good at, right? We we don't want to waste energy. We have to conserve it so we can survive till the next summer. We have to get through winter, all of that fun stuff. <laughs> but the MCAT, unfortunately, is not kind to people who avoid their weaknesses. Mm -mm. No, it's not. So let's talk about trouble topics. Yes. When a student is going through this process, and we've we've covered this topic a ton in terms of reviewing full length exams, right? Going through a practice test and going, okay, I, yeah. I, I took seven and a half hours to take that test. I'm mm -hmm. gonna take 10 hours or so to actually review the test and look at everything. Yes. If a student starts to see a pattern of, uh-oh, I see where I'm starting to struggle or where I do struggle, what is the first thing you think a student should be doing to actually go, okay, right? A acceptance, right? I I'm through the denial stage. I need to get to acceptance so I can work on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, so I think I'll ground it in my own experience. So physics was my trouble topic. And I think physics is a lot of people's trouble topic and or OCHEM. Actually, that's another really common one. But for me, when it came to physics, I think like it was kind of the bane of my existence um, when I was reviewing full lengths. It was something that I always like struggled with. And a lot has to do with the fact that I was struggling to balance. And this is something that we do go over in Blueprint is uh, balancing between actual calculations and reasoning, for example. Um, and that's, you know, when it comes to doing like really mathy problems for physics or even chemistry and whatnot. Um, and I think like for me in the beginning, when I would look at what I was doing wrong in physics, I would, I was still in the denial phase. I was like, oh, I don't want to look at this. I don't want to see this ever again. I don't want to look at this topic. This is so difficult. But I knew that if I really wanted a competitive score, like I was going to have to tackle that fear and those weaknesses. And so I think the like one of the first things that you would do is are you struggling determining whether you're struggling with content or strategy? Because sometimes like you'll know the content really well, yeah. but when it comes to the question, like you, you knew the content, you knew the equation, you knew all of this, but it was the strategy, right? Like you weren't great at the strategy in terms of like, did you even have to do math, a lot of math to solve this problem? Or was it something that you could have figured out conceptually or narrowed down the answer choices really quickly, right? And so I think like, but sometimes it is content-based that you got a question wrong because you just weren't strong in the content. So, and content's kind of easier to map out how to improve because you can say, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to re-review this. I'm going to do flashcards, whatever it is to solidify the content. But strategy is a little bit more difficult because strategy takes time. And that, to what we always say, is more practice problems. You're not going to solidify strategy by reviewing a couple of modules or going over the content again. The only way to do that is to continue practicing similar problems. And you really have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to be okay with getting questions wrong. Honestly, I feel like a lot of like pre-meds, like when we're doing MCAT questions, every question we get wrong is like a bullet to our heart. <laughs> like, oh, I don't want, like, why am I getting this wrong? Like it really, it was like so all, painful. All, all I can picture is, is a student <laughs> sitting there pointing the finger and going, shot to the heart and you're to blame, <laughs> right? Pointing at the MCAT. Yes. <laughs> Yes, literally. It was like so painful. And especially in the beginning, it's so hard not to like 
get into that spiral mindset of like every question I wrong, get wrong is like a reason why I'm going to fail, right? And and again, well, we want to avoid not feeling good. So we yes. focus on the thing that we're good at. It's like, oh, I'm going to avoid, yes. right? In your case, the physics, I'm going to avoid that because it just doesn't yes. make me feel good about myself. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And some of these topics are... I mean, they're quite difficult and there's so many. And so whether it's, you know, for some people, it's not physics. For some people, it's chemistry. For some yeah. people, it's OCHEM, bio. For some people, it's psych. I mean, psych and social was my happy place. It was <laughs> my comfort. Um, but for others, it's a nightmare, yeah. right? Cars, so right? Oh, yeah, cars. I've, cars is like the unspoken, like, horror for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, no, like let's uh, let, let me rewind a little bit. So a student's going through this process. And they're sitting there by themselves, looking at their full length exam, looking at their score, trying to go through this process, right? And you're like, well, is it is it content or is it strategy? How are they going to know if it's content or strategy? Yeah, I think with content, you can easily pinpoint and say, I straight up did not know this fact. Like, I, I did not know this concept or I had completely forgotten it. And content is quite easy to identify, right? It's like, just, I just didn't know it. And especially in the beginning of your MCAT studying, a lot of like when you're taking full links in the, in the beginning, a lot of them, the questions you'll get wrong have to oftentimes do with content, like, because you haven't reviewed it. And I'm talking as a non-traditional student as well. Um, revisiting this material five to six years after I've taken, took those classes in undergrad. Um, and there were things where I was like, yeah, I straight up just don't remember this. I haven't reviewed it yet because with blueprint, I was a blueprint student. And so we take full links from the beginning. And so we'll take full links like 25% into the course, which means again, I haven't reviewed everything. So if for content, if you can pinpoint very easily, like I just didn't know this, there's content. Strategy is when you knew the content behind it. You knew like whether it's the equation or the enzyme class or whatever, but by any means you didn't get it right because you read the question wrong or because you did the calculation wrong or you didn't reason well or you applied the concept incorrectly when it comes to psych and soch, right? And so it's like you know it, you just didn't take that extra step, which is all what we know is what makes the MCAT a tricky exam because it's not just content, it's also strategy, right? Can you apply the knowledge that you've learned? Yeah. Um, and so that's when you have to say, okay, why am I tripping up? Like, what is going on here? Why did I, why was I not able to use the content I know that underlines this question and effectively apply it to what was presented to me? So. Yeah. So a student goes, okay, it's, it's strategy. I'm struggling with that strategy. I'm struggling to understand what that looks like for, for me, mm -hmm. how for them, again, they're, they're alone, hanging out, listening to us. Uh, and, and they, they understand that, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like they have, uh, a coach sitting right next to them, a tutor yeah. sitting right next to them, right? If it, I, I like sports analogies and you can use them all the time, right? If, yeah. if I'm sitting there going, I want to hit home runs, but I strike out all the time, it's a coach that's going to sit there and work with me on my swing and, and hopefully help me hit home runs. Mm -hmm. How is a student who is studying by themselves in the library at, or at home going to understand yeah. what it is about their strategy that needs to change? Yeah, I think one thing that we do with Blueprint is we always tell students to like slow down a little bit, right? Because there's sometimes a rush, like we're like, I just want to do as many practice problems and get as many questions. And you do, you want to get through a substantial number of questions before you take the real MCAT. But sometimes strat because strategy takes time to absorb, you have to go a little bit slower in the beginning. And that's what we, for example, say with cars, right? Like, um, because I mean, I'm going to dive into cars for a moment when you're doing cars, a lot of people want to focus on the timing. They're like, I want to get my timing really great right away. But when you do that, you don't necessarily give yourself the opportunity to learn strategy, internalize it and actually use it. Right. So what we say is like, Hey, slow down, go back, do untimed practice, take your time as much as you can to do a problem like a passage set, 
right? Take as much time as you need and try to see if you can apply the strategy you've learned, right? Like for example, in cars, are you doing your retroactive highlighting really well? Are you able to eliminate answer choices that are like too extreme? Like identifying that, you know, for opinion questions, they shouldn't be like focusing on main idea, the answers or whatever it may be. Are you able to break down each question and answer to see how you can effectively apply that strategy? And that's why it takes some time to internalize, right? And so once you kind of slow down your practice a little bit and you feel like, okay, as I'm doing more and more practice problems, I feel like I'm getting better at identifying the strategy I need to use. That's when you can pick up the pace. That's when you can do, go back into timed practice and do, um, you know, more like full lengths or section exams. So really it's slow down, identify similar problems that you can do and then try to implement that those strategies. Try to see how it actually enacts itself in the questions and the answer choices. Um, and again, people don't want to like you want to achieve a hundred questions a day, and you're like, I don't have time for this. But I think those moments of investment are so worthy because that is what solidifies both the content and strategy in your mind, and is a much better time investment than you just like, you know, going head on into so much practice, but that practice continues to not be fruitful because you're making the same mistakes over and over again. Okay. So crawl before you walk, walk before you run is what you're yeah. saying. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and again, I think we have to, at the end of the day, it's, it's all kind of psychology here is, is. is helping the student understand Number one, yes, right? Th these these trouble topics that you are encountering, we have to figure out how to approach them, right? Again, is it is it content? Great, go study. Is it strategy? Let's slow down. But they attribute slowing down to failure, and yeah. failure is not okay, <laughs> and so they won't do it. How do we how do we force them <laughs> from a psychology standpoint again to go? You, you need to stop, right? It's like, I'm gonna put a cast on both of your feet so you can't keep <laughs> running past this. Like, you need to rest, you need to stop, you need to slow down. Yeah, I mean, failure is not fun. I think with any, like, you know, and I, I say this because I had such crippling test anxiety with the MCAT, like it was such a, like we had a question the other day to our students, like, what's the scariest thing you've ever done? And I was like, honestly, the MCAT. <laughs> And I've done, I've been through a lot in life. So it was like, it really was a scary exam. And not just because it's like so intense and so long. It was because there was so much psychology I had to battle through so much like feelings of imposter syndrome and like every question I got wrong, feeling like that was my final determiner. And like, and I tell people like, I went from a 492 diagnostic to a 519 N score. Mm -hmm. And I attribute so much of that. And as a non-trad, and I attribute so much of that to studying smartly. So I think with the MCAT, a lot of people think like quantity is more important than quality, right? Like the more, if I spend a huge amount of hours studying, that will equate to a good score, right? Like there's this idea of like, if I spend 12 hours at the library every single day for three months, I'm going to get a high score and believe it or not, sorry folks, but that's not necessarily <laughs> the case yeah. because if you're not studying smartly and not using your time efficiently, you won't see the, the, that increase from a pretty good score to an amazing score. I think like studying a lot, like content, everything gets you to a certain point. But when you start thinking about those competitive ranks, what differentiates is the application of understanding that the MCAT is a strategy test and it's an application test and that your content knowledge is not enough. Failure is not fun. I have been scared of failure. I have failed. I failed on the MCAT in a myriad of ways. It is painful. It is not fun. But something that was always told to me was that if I fail now as I'm studying, that's so much better than, and I learned from that failure, it's so much better than when I fail on the real exam and I have to retake it and go through all of that process. 
And slowing down isn't fun because you're like, you know, and sometimes when we hear other people, they're like, I'm doing this number of questions every single day and I'm doing this, this and this. And everybody's practice journey looks different. Everybody's studying journey looks different. Whether you're a full-time student, a full-time professional, doing a bunch of extracurriculars, have family life things, right, going on. You're like, well, if they're not slowing down, why am I slowing down? But it's that we go back to the idea of like, you have to study efficiently and smartly because if you don't, you're wasting your time. And I like cannot emphasize that enough. And I realized this as like a full-time working professional with other activities. I was like, I don't have time to study 12 hours a day. That's not realistic. So I have to figure out a way to study smartly. And if I'm not being able to internalize strategy right away, I have to figure out why, like what's going on. And when I spent time breaking down questions, internalizing that strategy, that was a much greater payoff than doing endless amounts of questions and not telling, analyzing what's going wrong and what I'm doing that's wrong. And then, you know, of course, sometimes you might need that extra step, right? So if you are, in a program like Blueprint, reaching out to your instructors, saying, okay, I'm still struggling with this. Like, what's going on? I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to not be afraid of failure, as painful as that sounds, to not be afraid of failure, to take it head on, to take on these challenges. And if you're able to and have the resources, ask for help. Don't be shy. Ask for help. It doesn't matter. We're here to help you. That's why we're getting paid. We're here to do this for you. Like, it, you know, I think what's interesting also for the MCAT is you have folks who can be really good at school, right? They're getting 4.0s, super accomplished, but then the MCAT is a bit of a disconnect. And sometimes that's a little bit of an ego hurt. You're like, well, I'm doing so great in school. Why is the MCAT not translating for me? Because again, it's an application test. It's totally different. And that also sets you up for medicine because that's how medicine is, right? Like, you're not going to just learn content. You're going to have to apply that content knowledge. And it's an uncomfortable skill to learn because we don't learn it in undergrad. We don't. We don't learn this in our classes. We're just like fed content. So you're actually teaching yourself a lot of new skills. And it's just like riding a bike. You know, I'm trying to find in my mind, I was like trying to find an analogy. It's just like riding a bike. You're not going to go mountain biking right away. I, I really hope you don't. <laughs> <laughs> a little scary if somebody's like my first time biking in my life I'm just gonna go mountain biking right you wouldn't do that you would start off probably with a tricycle and you would build up and then eventually you become such an expert you go mountain biking and you did it so comfortably because you know you've had so much experience so I hope that gives people more reassurance that it's okay to slow down it's not an indication of your final score in fact, it's just a very smart time investment for you.